Hi, welcome to my channel, Edith English Literature. To understand history of English literature, you will find uh, something where to begin, how to begin. And it is quite a difficult task for the beginners of learning English literature. Particularly, if you want to know in what way you can grasp the entirety of the history of English literature and how you can understand the inflow of literary outputs that the various authors and uh, various cultural uh, institutions has propounded, you should better understand the very civilization and the very inflow underneath. The civilization and its literary outputs is inseparable. You have to understand that bit. To better understand how to understand history of English literature and the very inflow and the very train of thoughts related to it, better tune in and follow this lecture for 15 minutes. To begin with, the history of English literature is related to the very civilization of that we call British, the English. The language as we have understood has its consistent journey from that prehistoric period till date. The linguist has uh, given an inflow example that how English the language has been evaluated or evolved. And um, there had been a tribe, it has been called, there had been a tribe, uh, a, a Middle East European sect who had the common language which is now extinct. That common language, um, they were the speaker and they were uh, like that of migratory parts, this community roamed throughout the world. And different sects uh, bisected in different regions and their language propounded, expanded in that way. But there are, there are some common qualities that are related and how uh, the linguist has uh, come into conclusion that these languages were, had a common origin. This is called Indo-European language or um, a language that had its origin, uh, whose originality has been proved, but whose uh, imprints and the inputs of all those details are missing. The common platform which language are parallel, like that of Sanskrit, Latin, and that of Old German, and all these languages have some parallel, have some similarities. So, taking into that category we can say Sanskrit is close to English language, but which English language is close to which language, which part of the English language that is Old English. Now how that Old English has come into um, our discussion. The Old English um, that we called the three Germanic tribes, uh, Anglos, Saxons and Jutes, they were uh, like tribal communities and these tribal communities uh, spoke uh, in the dialect of old Germanic uh, tones and these old Germanic tones as they invaded into uh, the region called now England and suburb the areas related or nearby uh, modern part of those Scandinavian regions. And these Anglo Saxon and Jutes had their interrelated trades, businesses, as well as um, social and uh, intermarriages, and all such um, cultural exchanges were possible there. So, gradually, these three tribes mingled together, and though prominent uh, tribe, uh, the e economical caliber the, the among these three tribes Anglos and Jutes, Anglo and Saxon this part of uh, Jutes were 
marginalized and later two sections anglos and saxons were prominent one so their language has gained the pop popularity it is very simple why 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 english is now popular because of that colonization and because of this random impact on human civilization and its economic caliber the the person who has the economic strength must acclaim uh, social and linguistic uh, uh, platform it is very simple a man who is powerful in wealth in powerful in military his his language is also carry a uh, oath so simply uh, that anglo saxons anglo anglic and saxon these two tribes language has been prominent on so anglo saxons the very language that has been intermingled with them the language the common language that anglo and saxon these are been mingled with and their language is called anglo saxon later anglo <coughs> anglo part that is um, anglic parts and it has become more popularity and their language has becomes prominent and their land is called angla land and later angla land is later called england the modern day england so it's very simple so what i say there had been a common language the original language which is now missing one that original language is the father language of all the modern languages that we speak in uh, particularly the modern languages related to sanskrit uh, old germany and all that of latin and all these are have are having the same father tongue later they had been bisected and and languages have been given the variety of mixtures and spices and that had been three old tribes jutes anglo uh, anglic and saxon among them saxon and anglic become prominent and anglic language has gained the popularity and they are by the land is angla land and is called england so it's very simple okay uh, you get the very origin of the english language later i will explain how and why the english has become the world language day by day and how to learn the english literature that is propounded by and has been expanded through at the from the very beginning of renaissance till to the uh, till to the modernization of the westernization of the modern civilization that we find and how it is very important to learn and the very inflow of the english literature as a whole the old english has been as barbaric as prehistoric they had been constantly having some quarrels fight like that of uh, modern day affairs and that we are acclaiming as it as it is called civilized those were missing compared to that there had been comparative other communities or other tribes which are more 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 advanced more civilized more uh, acclaimed with with so much laurels but what i am talking about that english language which the original forefathers spoke uh, had been very similar to that of modern day uh, modern day german it was very um, now it later it evolved it had been again it had gained several uh, several mutation several uh, conversion and it has gradually shaped in the form of modern day english language as it um, again the modern english language now it was still restricted in a particular region that is called angla land or england so called but how it expanded into such a Uh, linguistic variety and as it expanded into the region throughout the world that there had been three part i will decide i will i will, I will define it in three parts particularly in the renaissance period as you know uh, what the time frame i was talking about it is it is um, uh, roughly 600 ad to 900 ad that had been developing the english language later in that part later in that part what happened the the learning the education uh, that um, it has been so popular is not in the um, uh, rent called uh, english 
So the renaissance part or the development of awakening, the new learning, new exploration into science, into literature, new way of humanity that has been uh, explained, uh, that has been understood or those, those people who have firstly tried to understand in the European part had been the uh, Latin one, had been the Italy one. But at the fall of Constantinople, that means uh, the fall of Constantinople in the Roman region, uh, the so many, so many scholars has just left that place and fled throughout the Europe. And gradually it reached into the French shore and later it reached into the English shore. That has been the historic event, the education that has been or the learning that has been out, that has been restricted into the uh, Italian part, into the uh, Roman part, Roman Empire part has been expounded throughout the Europe. So the learning has been, new learning has been invested in England and its result is prominent. The English has, English has become newly awakened with the new understanding of humanity. So many literature has been produced, started producing and so many of the human calibre of or the thought plan or the, or the very basics of philosophy was expounded. So the Renaissance element has made the backbone of the English literature and its and its uh, civil civil instinct. That civil instinct later has been the backbone for throughout uh, those years till to the uh, colonization period. At the period at the at the period of 15th or 16th century, that you know the European sect with the new Renaissance have started exploring new geographical regions. So they tried to reach into the far east, far west and as a result oh, they, don't, they, they did not came with only the weapons but they also came with the new learning, new learning, new awakening which was what foreign one. I am not speaking that they where they are, uh, they have come or where they anchored the, in that new place. It was, it was the native in their part. In, in, in the eyes of the European, it was native, but those civilizations were advanced one, civilized one. For example, in Africa, they were, they were in tribal communities, but their tribes, their thoughts, their um, had its own, 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 own civil, civil instinct. And those civilizations are, are, can never be or never be told that they are primitive. They were modern in their own way. So had been the English or Indian subcontinent. They were civilized for more than three or four thousand years, and even beyond it. And they were they were civilized, but they were not civilized in that way that the British can see it. So the British came here, came here, and with the colonial burden, they started educating us. So the Renaissance that happened in the first part of the. Um, 13th century to 16th century that reached into the region of Indian subcontinent at the part of at the time of uh, 18th 19th century. So gradually uh, the language uh, that they carried and become the language of these colonized people and they tried to better understand what the European or the English culture is by understanding the very language of English language. But there had been much debate which language has to prefer uh, the vernacular or the English. But uh, gradually English has gained the popularity because they had the upper hand. Their policies were there, their educational masterminds were there. So they gradually injected the English language into the mass. So English gained the popularity. This had been the one theory that the uh, first part that I called uh, the social movement that has evaluated the English language. Now, I second uh, in the second term, uh, I will explain that um, the modern civilization or the uh, modernity of the civilization has been defined uh, in that way uh, that we called um, that we called uh, the education or the knowledge. That knowledge base uh, has been uh, the modernity of the knowledge base. That means uh, the utility of the modernity of the knowledge base. I can I can say that if if I have that knowledge which can give me the bread and butter, uh, I will must acknowledge that knowledge and that particular knowledge I will invest my in my life and that particular investment uh, should be made easily by which language? English language. So English has been accepted. That is the social reason. Suppose if you want to age, if, if you want to know how to make 
how to make a robust a robust engine or aeroplane you must gain the knowledge of english first because it is very easy because the first hand experience or first hand explanation of that technology has been explained in english so english has become a ready acceptance for that social reasons and thirdly the vast and the vastness of this world has and the vastness of the technology has made make has made this world faster and uh, quite less complex and it has become uh, it has turned into a small village so gradually the communication part that has made this english language spread like that of fire so english is now trendy and we must uh, appreciate that english language uh, has its capability or caliber or its gamut of uh, that english language has make us uh, so enthusiastic that we gradually uh, learning english and trying to expand it and reach it uh, to the mass uh, to the people or to the world by which we can easily access the best benefit um, of our living of our living style in the last part of our discussion the literary volumes or the text that we should follow uh this roughly covers the entire span of english literary outputs that has been composed um, from dated back to the old english period which is uh, quite uh, not being properly recognizable as english popular but it is uh, the basic english that uh, it has been started with so we begin with uh, that part it is called old english roughly there are uh, text like beowulf and other uh, anglic poetry and then comes the middle english period uh, which roughly spans two or three hundred years uh, then comes the renaissance part pre renaissance part and renaissance part and then there is the great uh, calibers of university wits and shakespeare shakespearean writing then after that um, shakespearean period it comes uh, the puritanic age and after the puritanic period there comes the new uh, renaissance um, with the investment of nature so it comes the romantic period pre romantic period and romantic period then comes the victorian period and after that victorian period we gradually um, enters into the modern period so entirety of our um, literary journey begins from old english to middle english then uh, it uh, develops into modern period so in 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 this whole journey in this whole journey literary journey there are so many authors and they, uh, there are so many outputs and all these literary texts are historically important you have to study um, part a bit Uh, you have to dip into few of the text you have to evaluate those books how they have shaped or designed how uh, these are, are uh, these writings are um, written why why the what are what are the social implication of those writings and why these writings were written what are the social backgrounds of all these writing you have to understand it and um, in the modern period particularly when uh, english has expanded to a wide uh, range and uh, then comes uh, english literature uh, from uh, different sects not only from Brit british uh, but also from uh, different colonial uh, part and parcels and it might be african literature in english it might be the indian english it might be american english or uh caribbean english also and so forth so you have to study all those literature part a bit and you have to you have to collect the basic principles out of this literary text uh, that uh, sum up the entirety of the journey of a nation journey of a um, uh, particular race uh, if such is the case with english you can find out till to the modern period but in the modern period the english text is no more uh, entirely the english one but it has become the part or it has become more and more a native tongue to a, a native person suppose and suppose a an indian is writing in english he is speaking his own voice in 
uh, his uh, Indian uh, voice through expressed through English uh, or an American expressing he, he, its terms and condition in English or a Caribbean writer or an African writer. So, you have to understand that uh, that English literary text is more more expanded, more um, reaching more nook and corner of the each and every sect of the society when it reaches to the modern boundary. So, um, uh, happy journey to this uh, understanding and uh, if you follow this text, you will understand that all those texts, if you try to read and understand each and every text, then it is a difficult task. You have to measure which one is important, which one is uh, related to that particular period for the social and political as well as, as, well as humanistic approach to that writing which appeals you. So, your, your liking and dislike, disliking should have to be a measuring point of understanding or reading those texts. And historically evaluated few writings, which are the major point or which are the uh, standing pillars of the empire of English literature, you have to understand those texts, which are the um, milestones of English literature that you have to follow minutely and with the details. So, um, basically, uh, understanding English literature needs you uh, a proper understanding of that English literature or the English language in its linguistic term and secondly, you have to understand uh, the soci social point of view or societal point of view, why you are uh, reading or why you are reading or uh, um, diving in deep into the English text. And finally, and the uh, texts that you have to follow or you have to read, or read in minutes, in, in parts or in minute details uh, to make a plan or to make a proper understanding of the entire course of the English literature. And uh, that understanding will, will lead you further reading and the journey will continue. So, thank you.